I've heard not once about wonders my home is rich in, about the path that runs through the forests and canyons, prairies and fields. I've heard about the herd of mustangs encased in steel and petrified forever trees that survived centuries. I've observed the way mighty water has grinned hard granite rocks, though the man who is weak and small was able to conquer this mighty strength. I've heard about flower fields, about their sweet captivity. I've seen wild animals to be at grass, enjoying every minute on the slope. How gorgeous is the old Pacific Ocean that casts ashore these wooden logs, whose waters stubbornly beat the rocks and unceasingly kiss the yellow sand. Oh, how many times I've sat on the shore at sunset, and the ocean pleased my eye, reflecting the palette of the sky, hiding the sun in its depth, and washing my worries away. It's time to see everything with your own eyes and to enjoy every corner of Washington State. Go for it. Unveil the lands of Washington. State Route 17 is a 136-mile-long state highway that serves the Columbia Plateau in the central part of Washington State. It passes through such well-known rural areas as Franklin, Adams, Grant, Douglas, and Okanagan counties, and travels northwest through the Grand Coulee, passing several mirror silver lakes, including beautiful Soap Lake, Lake Lenore, and Alkali Lake. Then the road turns northeast and meets with Blue Lake and Park Lake. Shortly afterwards, it enters Sun Lake State Park and takes you to Dry Falls that is located on the north end of Grand Coulee. Several words should be said about the semi-arid Columbia Plateau that occupies nearly a third of the territory of Washington State. This famous region borders with the Cascades to the west, with the Okanagan Highlands to the north, with the Blue Mountains to the southeast, and the Rockies to the east. The youngest of this terrain's features were formed during the most recent ice age, when glacial outwash was deposited and cut by the Missoula floods. These floods swept periodically in the region, and they were a result of an ice dam's destruction that contained glacial Lake Missoula, Scientists believe that this lake was holding 500 cubic miles of water. Wanapum Recreational Area, with its cozy camping, is a part of Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park. Fabulous recreational possibilities including hiking, fishing, wildlife watching, swimming, and much more. To the west of the highway is the 2,500-foot-long Vantage Bridge, which connects steep banks of the Columbia River, rising above the water almost 75 feet. This bridge is a part of the transatlantic highway I-90 that connects Boston and Seattle. On the hilly banks of the Columbia stand windmills, working tirelessly to convert the power of the wind into electricity. The benefit to these open spaces for the windmills is obvious. Grandfather Cuts Loose the Ponies is the real name of Wild Horse Monument. You can view the Wild Horses sculptures from the parking lot east of Vantage, but we recommend getting brave and taking the hike to the top of the plateau. The views from there are simply amazing. Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park has remained one of the most unusual petrified forests in the world. 
This state park was established and named a historic preserve in the 1930s when highway construction teams found these rarest forms of fossil wood. The petrified trees remind tourists that this part of Washington state was completely different than what we see today. Geologists say that about 15 million years ago during the Miocene period, the region was humid and wet. There were lots of small lakes and swamps surrounded by forests. Ginkgo, maple, walnut, oak, sycamore, and horse chestnut trees grew in the hillsides, while Douglas fir, hemlock, and spruce grew at the higher elevations. The jewel of this park is a 1.5 mile interpretive trail that takes you through the exposed part of prehistoric Lake Vantage's bed, showing you 22 different types of petrified logs. It's worth mentioning that Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park presents a unique look at Washington's geological history, but the real experience comes from exploring the park's backcountry. At the very beginning, the trail takes you up the steep hill, then runs along a broad bench above beautifully formed basalt cliffs. This trail shows you the real beauty of this eco-region, along with panoramic views at the top of the ridge. The day comes to an end and the low sun highlights the uneven terrain of the region, making the hills seem bigger with their long shadows. The heat of the day subsides, the moon appears in the sky, and windmills say goodbye to another day with a wave of their huge blades. Twilight embraces the land, with only cicadas breaking the silence with their songs. Northrop Canyon Trail is a very popular trail in the Steamboat Rock State Park area. It's a real paradise for hikers and those who enjoy seeing wildlife. Beautiful wildflowers, breathtaking views, different representations of flora and fauna, everything is so perfect here. Picturesque paths lead hikers along the steep walls of the canyon, crossing neat groves with deciduous and coniferous trees and flowering shrubs. It's as if you've stumbled across an ancient town where houses have turned into stone cliffs and narrow streets run through the town, occasionally going out into the wide open spaces. Some abandoned houses are more resistant to nature, but life goes on and very soon they will disappear in the green embrace of nature. This area was settled by the Northrop family in the late 1800s, but it has always been a shelter for people and animals. Hikers can still find an old house along the way, 
and other artifacts of the long history of this region. Northrop Canyon Trail is a 6.2 out and back trail that climbs up the canyon and offers great opportunities to enjoy the only native forest in Grant County. This conifer forest grows amongst outcrops of glacial carved granite. At the end of the trail, there's a treat for every hiker, a crystal and refreshing lake, securely hidden behind the stone walls. The lake keeps in its dark waters the secrets of bygone centuries. Steamboat Rock State Park is a wonderful 3,522-acre park with camping possibilities and 50,000 feet of freshwater shoreline on the banks of Banks Lake. The main jewel of the park is Steamboat Rock, a huge rock with 600 acres on its surface. The butte rises 700 feet above the waters of Banks Lake. The trail to the top of the butte is only two miles long, but the views are excellent. Steamboat Rock is a massive basalt island that was created by all of the Great Missoula floods and was later surrounded by the waters diverted by the Grand Coulee Dam.
This place has always been popular, first used by nomadic Native American tribes and later by the first settlers who came to the region. Currently, this location is also being used by military troops for aircraft flying training missions. It's not difficult to imagine such a flight when you enjoy this vast expanse. The endless blue sky is like the ocean, decorated with white waves, clouds of all shapes. Those same clouds cast dark shadows on the ground and are no longer lonely foamy fleeces but real islands with white tops and dark blue bottoms. Like giant airships hovering over the lake, they darken its waters. Some have already spilled on the mirror surface of the lake and the dried land its reserves of moisture pleasing grass, flowers and shrubs. The colors of the sky flow down to the ground like watercolor spreads on the paper. The setting sun goes below the horizon, completing the picture with a rainbow and coloring the mountains in red. Sun Lakes Dry Falls State Park is a gorgeous 4,000 plus acre state park that's situated at the foot of the famous Dry Falls. The former waterfall was created by the Missoula floods, but even though today hikers aren't able to enjoy this splashing water, they will be fascinated by the beauty of a 3.5 mile wide and 400 foot high basalt cliff. Scientists say the former waterfall was four times the size of Niagara Falls. Sun Lakes Dry Falls State Park is known for the abundant wildlife and numerous recreational possibilities, but it's also a great example of shrub step habitat. With 73,000 feet of lake shoreline, the park offers wonderful opportunities for boating, swimming, and fishing. 
we recommend starting your trip with visiting famous Vista House Overlook, where you'll enjoy the best panoramic views of the park, including Dry Falls. The Visitor Center is a must-see for those who are interested in early human history of this region and the history of lava flows and the Ice Age floods. Blue Lake is among the state's best lakes for different kinds of water recreation. On hot summer days, tourists and locals enjoy spending time in the cool waters of Blue Lake. You'll see kids in all kinds of inflatable toys, others enjoying boating, cruising around on jet skis and wave runners, or simply trying their luck at fishing. Lake Lenore Caves Trail is a favorite among hikers. It's not a very long trail, but it does offer great views of native eastern Washington scenery, as well as results of the Great Missoula Flood. Lake Lenore is a gorgeous 1,600-acre lake created by the Missoula Floods. The lake is situated between Soap Lake and Alkali Lake in Grant County, Washington. The lake is quite long, but narrow. One of the must-see spots in this region is Lake Lenore Caves, which were also created by the floods. The caves are situated at the northern end of the lake and consist of seven distinct caves, all of them easily accessible. These old caves were created by the plucking of basalt rocks from the walls of the coolies. Later, these caves were used by Native Americans as shelters and are still being used by Native Americans as a sacred gathering place. State Route 155 is the main route that stretches from north to south in the Grand Coulee Dam area. It's a very scenic drive that runs along Banks Lake and takes you across the Columbia River. Basalt walls and water, a very scenic combination.
Grand Coulee Dam is a magnificent construction that will take your breath away. The 550-foot tall dam was built from the 500-foot wide granite base. It was constructed between 1933 and 1942. Originally, the dam had only two power plants. The third one finished in 1974. This dam is the largest electric power producing station in the United States. The visitor center near the dam has interesting exhibitions with many historical photos, different geological samples, dam and turbine models. On summer evenings, visitors of the dam may enjoy the laser light show that is projected onto the wall of the dam. Beasley Hills near Ephrata is a fabulous trail system with typical eastern Washington scenery. The hills are part of a geological formation that's known as the Yakima Belt that rises between the Frenchman Gap and Moss's Cooling. Spring is one of the best times to hike here because the trail provides an easy access to fragile spring meadows full of yellow bells, mariposa lily, grand widow, prairie star flower, salt and pepper desert parsley, buckwheats and buttercups. At the same time, the Columbia Plateau ecoregion is considered the state's fertile agricultural heart. From Beasley Hills, you'll have the opportunity to enjoy endless fields. This three-mile trail is a wonderful opportunity to enjoy and take in the fresh air and majesty of the area. After sunset, when the beauty of the earth starts to fade, new beauty appears, heavenly beauty, even cosmic. Diamond scattering of stars stand out on the black velvet of the space, and the Milky Way galaxy is frequently crossed by meteors burning up in the atmosphere. Squim, the lavender capital of North America, is known for its beautiful lavender farms and quality lavender products. The sunny, dry climate in the Squim Dungeness Valley is similar to the south of France, making Squim one of the best places in the country to grow this beautiful, fragrant herb. The Wardine du Soleil Lavender Farm is a certified organic lavender farm established in 1999 and located in Squim. The main feature of the farm is that sea of purple with a spectacular Olympic range in the background. See for yourself 10 acres of gorgeous flowers, stimulating your senses and calming your body and soul. The farm offers lavender bath and body products, lavender aromatherapy and herbal products, lavender soaps, lavender gifts, and much more. Wardine du Soleil is open from the first day of spring until harvest time, when it's time to distill organic essential oil. The Lavender Connection Farm is a wonderful 5.5-acre lavender farm offering guests more than 4,000 lavender plants of over 20 different varieties. This farm is a great place to relax and enjoy a little beauty, peace, and serenity. If you're lucky, you can watch the process of lavender essential oil distillation. Guests are also welcome in the perfumery where you can sample different kinds of essential oil and perfumes. If you're a creative person, you can even invent your own scent here.
Gray's Marsh Berry Farm in Lavender is a well-known U-Pick Berry in Lavender Farm, which rests on the rich soil of the Squim Prairie, close to the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Come here to be engulfed in the soothing smell of lavender. The views in the farm are superb. On a clear day, visitors not only enjoy the purple fields of lavender, but also the majestic Olympic Mountains. This mountain range serves as a shadow and creates perfect conditions for agriculture, especially for growing lavender. In the average, there are 290 sunny days a year. Perfect weather. The Martha Lane Lavender Farm is one of the most beautiful family farms in Squim. It's located between picturesque Douglas and Noble Firs. The best time to visit Squim and the Lavender Farms is July and August. On this farm, visitors breathe in the aroma of 4,000 lavender plants and over 30 varieties, including Royal Velvet, Fulgate, Hitcoat Pink, Violet Intrigue, and Hitcoat Giant. Among the lavender fields, you'll also find some Wickoff, Idlevice, White Spike, Miss Catherine, Hitcoat, Purple Bouquet, Melissa, Province, Martha Roderick, and Old English plants that are sprinkled throughout the fields. Oliver's Lavender Farm is not the biggest one in the region, but it is very picturesque. Thousands of visitors come every year to see their rows of purple flowers. Guests will receive a friendly welcome from the owners and be able to shop for lots of different kinds of lavender products as well as lavender-related gifts. Among the attractions at Oliver's Lavender Farm, the owner's home and their beautiful cottage garden. Tourists and visitors refer to this farm as the biggest and best little lavender farm in Squim. Hurricane Ridge is considered to be the most easily accessible mountain area in the Olympic National Park. Catch a clear day and you'll be treated to fabulous views throughout the year. A great place to start your trip in the region is the Hurricane Ridge Visitor Center. It's located at the end of the road, but the views of the Olympic Mountains, even from the parking lot, are breathtaking. Hurricane Ridge is a must-visit destination in the Olympic National Park. From the elevation of 5,200 feet, visitors have the opportunity to delight in the stunning views of the mountains, alpine meadows, and closeness of the sky. Hurricane Hill Trail is one of the most scenic trails in the area. It's a three mile out and back trail that is located in the heart of the Olympic National Park. If you're hiking on a clear day, you'll enjoy a spectacular 360 degree view all the way to Mount Baker, San Juan Island, Vancouver Island, and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. During the summer, the meadows and slopes are covered with wildflowers, and marmot and deer are frequently seen here. Wildlife is abundant.
forewarned, you could even encounter a bear. Wild deer and bear grazing together on the green lawns and on the slopes, enjoying the warm rays of the sun, all a part of God's skillfully created picture. It's no wonder this destination is so popular with hikers. Remember, as tempting as it may be, do not feed the deer. They need to fend for themselves. This is a well-maintained trail that can be accessed throughout the year. Just imagine what this landscape looks like in the winter. It goes without saying, in winter, this location takes on a completely different look. As we have mentioned, Hurricane Ridge has a well-developed trail system, most of which are easily accessible and provide fabulous views, giving you an up-close look at the real beauty of this region. Big Meadow Trail and Cirque Rim Trail are well-maintained paved meadow trails. They both run about a half a mile and are considered to be pretty easy since they are relatively flat. Big Meadow and Cirque Rim Trails will take you through wandering meadows filled with wildflowers and subalpine green forests. Both of the trails are well marked and have interpretive signs along the way. High Ridge Trail is a short, one-mile trail full of educational and interpretive exhibits and can be accessed from the Cirque Rim Trail. You just need to turn on to the High Ridge Trail. The path provides stunning views, especially after you've gained a little altitude. Hiking in this region offers numerous opportunities for wildlife watching. There are lots of wild animals here. Lahani Ridge is located close to Hurricane Ridge and also provides great views. It can be accessed through different trails. The shortest access, but the steepest one, is the Switchback Trail. Just so you know, the path ascends 1,500 feet in just 1.5 miles. But of course, this steep trail offers gorgeous views of the Olympic Mountains. If you choose the Sunrise Ridge Trail, you'll be amazed by the beautiful and colorful meadows full of summer flowers. The views from the Klahani Ridge are spectacular and include Elk Mountain and the Grand Ridge as well as beautiful Cox Valley and Mount Cameron. Ruby Beach on the south side of the Olympic National Park is one of the most visited beaches of this region of diversity. Ruby Beach is definitely one of the must-see places in the park and is easily accessible about 27 miles from the town of Forks. It should be noted that the beach got its name thanks to the pink sand, which got its color from the small particles of garnet it's made from. The shoreline of the beach offers great views of rainforests, mountains with glaciers, and much more. Now this may be called a beach, but it's not suitable for swimming or camping. In fact, camping's prohibited there.
Visitors will find and enjoy piles of driftwood that have been thrown on the shore by waves and storms. It's hard to imagine the power of the water and the strength of the wind that brought them here. The Hole in the Wall Trail is a magnificent path that runs along the ocean to an outstanding natural arch in the sea. Hole in the Wall, the arch, was creatively carved by wind and waves. It's located in a far end of the Olympic coast, but the route to the arch is scenic and enjoyed by thousands of people every year. Do remember that the two-mile hike to the arch can only be done during low tide, but it is available all year long. Sea stacks, huge logs, rocks, and gorgeous views, all yours along the way. The distance to the arch isn't very far and can be easily accessed, but what you'll love more is the stunning, gorgeous, breathtaking views of the rocks, logs, and endless horizon. Sandy Kalaylock beaches are considered to be among the premier beaches on the Olympic Peninsula coast. They're located in a close proximity to the city, but the wild nature, rocks, and great coves make this destination peaceful and tranquil. Kalaylock Browns Point Trail is an easy route that can be hiked even by kids. It offers wonderful opportunities for bird watching, soaring bald eagles, seagulls, and other coastal birds. Cape Flattery is the most gorgeous place on the Olympic Peninsula. This cape is the northernmost point of the contiguous United States and is where the Strait of Juan de Fuca meets the Pacific Ocean. You'll enjoy a serious dose of nature, stunning views, and dramatic scenery. This territory belongs to the Macaw Indian Reservation, but the cape can be easily reached from a short path. It's mostly a boardwalk made out of cedar planks which saunters down the hill to Nia Bay.
Four viewpoints along the trail provide unique and fascinating views of the Flattery Cape, sea stacks, coves, caves, and more. The last viewpoint on the trail overlooks Tatouche Island that was named after a Macaw chief and has always been a place to stay in camp for macaws during their seasonal fishing and hunting trips. A lighthouse, at that time the third lighthouse in Washington State, was built on the island in 1857. Ozette Triangle, or Lake Ozette Loop, is a classic hike on the Olympic Peninsula. It has a nine-mile loop trail that runs along the forest before arriving at stunning views of the rocky beach. The path begins at the ranger station, crosses the Ozette River, and runs into the coastal forest. The trail is well maintained with wooden boardwalks that keep you above the marsh and mud. After wandering through the forest and prairie, the path takes you beachside. Head north if you want to reach Cape Alava. The coniferous forest makes a close approach to the ocean, and on the stone beach there are lots of uprooted trees, frozen in various poses. Their branches still trying to reach the sun, and fantastic shapes of the roots are like fingers pointing to the ocean horizon. Huge waves every second meet the shore, embracing large boulders, and the tide exposes underwater life where hermit crabs fight over crab claws. And various sea life wait for their prey. It's a great place to enjoy some solitude and serenity, just sitting still and enjoying the sunset in silence.
Thank mm-hmm. you.